Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. I'm Graham. So today's video is in a response from a question that I got last week from Amanda. So thanks again for commenting and leaving some feedback. So Amanda's question was regarding mezzotint tools, how to use them, and where to get them from. So a quick disclaimer, every printmaker I know uses their equipment, and has their own techniques individual to themselves. So just keep that in mind. This is the way I go about using them, not necessarily the best way or the way you should do it. So let's get into it. So before even beginning a print, there's a couple things that are important. So lighting is the first one. A big challenge with working with mezzotints is seeing the plate as you work it. Um, since burnishing and scraping is makes the plates very reflective, it's important to have diffused lighting. So this is the kind of the setup that mezzotint artists have been using since it was created. And um, this is the one I have. So it's a hardboard frame with some wood supports and basically a sheet of tracing paper taped across it. I then position a light behind it, creating a nice diffuse light. So you put the light behind it, and you have a nice diffuse light that shines through the tracing paper. So you don't get any, any highlights in your plate, it's just nice even lighting. Um, the opening is about 10 by 12, but it's really up to you how big you want to make the setup. Um, I have a small studio, so it's important to make it portable. So here's what the back of it looks like. And I can take out the tracing paper and put in a new sheet if it gets torn up. And then I can also, has a chain that hooks on there. And so I can adjust the angle to get the, the optimum lighting. So here you can see what the plate looks like with just natural compact fluorescent lighting in the overhead fan. Um, it's kind of hard to see the plate, hard to see the details as you're working on it. It's not awful, but it's definitely not ideal. And here's the same setup plate in the same position using the diffuse lighting through the tracing paper. It's much easier to see the details. You don't have to worry about glares and reflections. So the next thing I use is an engraver sandbag. So this allows you to easily rotate the work around and also allows the plate to be higher off the work surface. And it makes scraping and burnishing easier on your hands and wrists because you can have the blade up higher off of the table. Um, they come in many sizes. I have a small and a medium size here. And you can use either one depending on the plate or you can stack them and get even closer up to you for you can you can really see what you're doing good. So the next step is you'll need to prepare the mezzotint ground like this onto the copper plate. Um, for this, I use a mezzotint rocker. People use roulettes, hacksaw blades, aquatint, and any other way you can imagine to build up the texture. I like the ease and consistency of using a rocker. Um, I have another video I'll link down below that goes into detail about how to use them. But basically, you rock the copper plate with the tool. So using the rocker jig, it's pretty simple. You simply just rock back and forth like this. Rotate the plate, rock back and forth. And you do that until you have a nice consistent ground all the way across your copper plate. So one thing to add, before rocking the plate, I use a standard metal file and bevel the edges. Keeps the mezzotint rocker teeth from getting broken off on the, the hard corner of the copper. And then after I finish rocking the plate, I bevel it again with the file some people use a jeweler's file to get a really smooth edge. I usually just burnish it afterwards to kind of make a nice clean, clean edge of the plate. So some people use a roulette to make a ground on their copper plates instead of using a mezzotint rocker, or you can use it as a tool to make a texture, but I don't think it holds up as well to repeated printing as a true mezzotint ground. But here's a, here's a roulette. So it has a wood handle, has a roller on the edge, so with this tool, you can just rock it back and forth across your plate. Makes an interesting noise. If you look at the pattern that's created, so there you go. And you can rock this in different directions, back and forth, and get a pretty solid texture. And then you can scrape and burnish this away like a mezzotint. So here are the tools I use to actually make the image on the plate. So I have scrapers in various sizes. So here's a bigger one. Kind of have a smaller one here too. Um, so it's important when you use the scrapers that you keep them sharp. So I use an Arkansas stone and sharpening oil. And especially when you buy them new, can't really tell on this one, but there's machining marks right, right on the, the edge of the blade. And those, those will show up when you scrape and it, it makes it not work as well. So you want to sharpen even brand new scrapers to get rid of those marks. I also, apply tape to the edge of the blades here because I like to hold them close to the tip and that way you don't cut your fingers because the blade extends all the way into the handle. 
So depending on the size of the plate I'm working on, I use all different size scrapers. So this is a kind of has a different profile to the tip of it. It's more curved. This one has a pretty fine, fine point on it. So you have to be careful not to scrape lines into it and make sure you're just scraping the burrs away. This is more of an all-purpose scraper that I use frequently. So here's how I go about using the scraper. You want to make sure that you're not burnishing the, the points down. You want to simply scrape away all the points on the plate. Because if you don't scrape them, if you just burnish them down, it's going to look shiny, but you're not actually lightening the plate as much. And as you work this, you should also see a, a small pile of dust start to accumulate from the copper shavings that you're taking away. So I'll make this small area and I'll print this so we can see what it looks like when it's all done. And I'll scrape deeper on this side to get down to the bare copper. So you can see the different values you can create. And if you use too much of the point of the scraper, you end up making small dry point lines, which then fill with ink. So you have to burnish those away later. So you want to try to make sure you're only scraping away the points. So next up is burnishing. You can burnish right onto the fresh ground or you can burnish areas that you've already scraped down. So over here, I'll just burnish freshly ground plate. And all this is doing is bending the burrs down. And it's a bit deceiving on the, on the copper like this because it's making the copper more reflective. So it's not really as light as you think it might be. So you actually have to push quite hard to get solid white areas. And if you're not scraping first, for me, it's almost impossible to get a solid white area. You're always going to have little pockets of ink that you smash the burrs into. So it's more like a field of, of white with black dots in it. You can also scrape over areas that you've, I'm sorry, you can burnish over areas that you've scraped and smooth out the texture. And this is how I get solid white, is I scrape the areas and then I go over with the burnisher and get the copper as, as shiny as I can. So this is a standard burnishing tool, has a, has a point on one end and a curved burnisher here. I have a small pointed burnisher that I use for tiny detail work. And this one you have to be really careful not to get too close to the tip of it or you make dry point lines into your plate. This one is a ball burnisher. So this one you don't have to worry so much about making dry point lines because the whole surface is smooth. So you can really get in there and push hard and it smooths the copper down to a, a mirror finish. And also keep in mind when you're burnishing and scraping, if you're going right against fresh ground over here and then the part you're scraping over here, it's really hard to get this edge to print white because as you're wiping it, this ink is gonna be pushed across it. So sometimes it's best to, to work away from the edges if you're using bright white, but you can still print it. It just takes some extra effort. And lastly, this is a, the biggest burnisher I have. And I use this for kind of large areas on a plate where I really wanna put some, some force behind it. So you can obviously also mix and match different tools. So you can use a, a dry point needle on the copper plate and make dry point lines right into the, the area that you scraped and burnished and those will print just like intaglio lines and pick up the ink. And you can also use the roulette. You can get effects using the roulette on top of mezzotint grounds as well as areas that you've scraped away and want to add in some more texture to that. So when I use the scraping tool, I try to make even strokes at the same depth for each one. Otherwise, when you go back through later, you're going to have a bunch of different values as you work across the plate. So you want to try to get as consistent as you can. For me, small, small arcs seems to work pretty good to get this. So each pass blends into the next one versus if you do hard straight lines, depending on the angle of the blade, you're going to get a, a lighter side and a darker side and then have to go back later and smooth all those out. And a lot of mesotint is just trial and error proofing, seeing what you like and what you need to fix. Then using a burnisher, I typically do the same thing. I do small circles, so I don't end up having a, a dark side and a light side if I do solid strokes like this. So if you just do small circles across the plate, and even then you have to make sure that each pass of the circles 
blends into the previous one. Otherwise you, you're gonna get different values across each, each pass. And then you proof it, see what it looks like, and then come back and rework those areas again till you get it right. And looking at the copper plate, it's gonna look pretty good, but once you proof it, it's almost always a lot darker than you expected. And you have to go back in and burnish and scrape even more. Usually burnishing, you have to burnish harder than you would think you would need to. And as you scrape the burrs down, the, the burrs get wider. And so you have to push harder to get those burrs to go down versus in a fresh ground like over here, the tips of them are very small. So they bend over very easily. But once you get down to a point where you've already scraped down to the base, you really have to push down to make any sort of difference to the plate. But looking at it, it looks like it's brighter just because you've polished it up. But when you print it, it's not necessarily gonna hold less ink. All right, so here we have the plates after they've been printed. So up here, this is just burnished, lightly using the burnishing tool. This is the scraper. So scrape more here, got a little bit lighter. This is just the scraper. And these are the dry point lines I used with the uh, diamond pointed scribe. This section I scraped and then I also burnished over it to smooth it out. And then finally, this is another just burnished area. So you can see the different values you get by using each tool and then combining the multiple tools together. It's really just getting a feel for using the tools and how much you need to scrape and how much you need to burnish to get the desired effect. And if you just scrape, you can kind of see it, it's not as clean along the edge. You can see a lot of the, the tone from the plate coming through in the lighter areas, but then the dark areas stand out as well. But if you scrape and then burnish, it gives a more even tone from light to dark. Then over here, we have the piece of copper that I used the roulette on. And the plate was pretty beat up, but you can see the, the pattern that it creates. And if you kept using the roulette across the whole plate, it would get darker and darker, obviously. And then you could scrape and burnish this away. And lastly, I want to bring up this book. It's uh, The Mesotint by Carol Wax. Um, Carol Wax is an amazing mesotint artist. Um, so I'll put a link to this, I, I guess to Amazon, down in the description box. Basically, this book covers the history of mesotints and all the techniques and has a bunch of her artwork as well as many other amazing mesotints in there. So it's worth checking out. It's kind of a, the best book I've found on mesotints. And if you have any other book suggestions, leave a comment down below. All right, so that wraps it up. Hope this video was helpful. I'll put a link down in the description box of all the different tools that I had in this video. And you can pick them up online or your local art store and leave a comment down below if there's anything you'd like to see or anything I missed in this video. And I'd really appreciate it if you subscribe to the channel and help it keep growing and I'll have a video up next week. All right, thanks.